Well, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Al Fadi, and uh, you're joining us in a special edition of Let Us Reason. And my apology, we ran into some technical issues, so hopefully things are resolved by now. We have uh, a very special uh, show today. We have a dear brother in Christ. His name is Adam Seeker, and that's the name he goes by. And uh, we elected also for his safety to honor his request not to show his face but uh, he is going to uh, share with us his journey to Christ. And uh, as always, uh, we are delighted and excited when we hear these kind of stories because it's an encouragement to all of us. And uh, hopefully you will get to know yet another child of God today. Thank you to all of you who uh, are here. Thank you for our moderators. And I just wanna apologize in advance, folks. Uh, there has been some technical issues and specifically has to do with internet connectivity. I'm hoping that it will not interrupt our live stream. If anything were to happen and we could not uh, restore it, I promise you we'll have our brother back again and we'll do another live stream if that's what we have to do. With that in mind, uh, I wanna welcome you brother and thank you so much for your courage, of course, and for taking the time to be with us here to share your journey to Christ. With that, I wanna turn it over to you and you may start by giving us a brief background about, uh, uh, you know, you don't have to give specifics, but but uh, you, your background, uh, were you born into an Islamic uh, family, an Islamic nation, and uh, how was it like for you growing up as a follower of Islam? Yes, hi, hi, brother Al-Fadi and uh, everyone. Uh, God bless you all. In Jesus' name I start. Yes, I, uh, I was born in a Sayyid Muslim family. Um, Sayyid, uh, by saying Sayyid, it means that my lineage all the way goes back to uh, Muhammad or his tribe, basically Ali to begin with. Uh, but um, we used to call ourselves uh, from the lineage of Imam Hassan Askri. I'm not a Shia, please make sure of that. Uh, a lot of people think about that and say that uh, he's from the Shia uh, religion, but I was a Sunni. Uh, as far as uh, my early life or life as Muslim concern, um, I used to, off I started offering prayer when I was, I think nine or 10, somewhere around that time. Uh, I never left a single fast, uh, starting from I think 13 or 14 years of my life. Um, and f prayer means uh, pray doing the five times Salah, uh, the Fajr, Zohar, Asr, Maghrib, and Isha. And uh, the more I grew up, uh, the more I used to uh, do more salah, prayers, um, fasting, taking care of the clothing, uh, specific bathing, ritualistic bathing, uh, prayer before driving, prayer to enter the house and prayer to get out of it. These are all very specific prayers that Muslims has to do during his life. The life of a of a Muslim is is pretty, calculated in terms of what he has to be to when he wake up, what he has to do when he has to take the bath, specific stuff and etc, etc, etc. Uh, being a, a family of a Sayyid uh, lineage or caste, uh, there were a lot of uh, respect just for, for the lineage that I had in our country. Uh, and yes, you can't see my face because my country has a has a law that blasphemers, uh, by law, they can kill me, hang till death. So uh, the Article right. 295C. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm saying unfortunately, that's the case. Uh, I agree with you. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's how I grew up, uh, going to mosque, uh, specifically the the Friday prayer. It is, you know, it's a it's a big prayer. Uh, even when I was working with uh, foreign companies, they knew that on Friday at this time to this time, nobody can have a meeting with me. So because I was very rigid on that point, like I can't miss the Friday prayer because that's what Muhammad said that if you miss the Friday prayer, um, he feels like that he should burn the house of that person who misses the Friday prayer. So I was uh, pretty. Uh, ritualistic when it comes to my um, my life as a as a Muslim and uh, and that's sorry 
Yeah, I mean, so, so uh, th that's how you were growing up. Uh, if you can touch also on what was your understanding of Islam, were you taught this at the school level also, or was it only at the mosque level and maybe at home? I'm just curious about how your knowledge about Islam uh, was continuing to grow. Uh, so yes, uh, there is Islamic studies that you that is compulsory uh, subject for you, uh, starting from the first grade till the high school. So even if you are a Christian or a Jew or atheist, you have to study Islamic studies. That's full stop. There is no question asked. Uh, in our school, there was another compulsory subject which was called Arabic. Uh, and you have to take the Arabic class till uh, middle school. So that was standard. So, but like, that's the, that's the problem. All they tell you is filtered stuff. Uh, so you have all the good things, all the nice things, all the peaceful things and all all good in there they will never tell you anything so and specifically just to correlate to this point we have a specific book called majmual sahil bukhari so instead of all the 14 16 books they have one single book over there which you can easily buy and they they have all the nice collections taken out from sahil bukhari into that book and same is the case that when you actually go and uh, study uh, in, in school, they have all the nicer verses um, in there. It will never touch, it will never even touch the, the specifically the Surat Toba or, or anything like that. For, they won't even touch it. And on the higher studies, when they touch it, they will describe it in a very specific way where you will feel that it is for that specific time according to that area and nothing more, nothing less. So all the ISIS and et cetera, which we hear here since uh, 90s and stuff like different kind of terrorist organization, we all used to think they are non-Islamic. And uh, that's, that's, a, that's a dilemma. So you are told something different, but at the same time, it is proclaimed very easily that if anybody says anything against Muhammad, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, you should kill him by law. And that's what Muhammad said and did. And in, in, in a Muslim country, that's very easily uh, stated. Uh, apostasy law, you should give three days to three months depending. But then again, apostates should be killed as well. And uh, so these these things are there. They do proclaim it, but in a way that it sounds right. You know what I mean? Like it, it just sounds right when when you are a Muslim. It just definitely sounds right because he's your prophet. Uh, how about if somebody says wrong about your mother or father and stuff like that? So that's how they defend that. And uh, that's 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 how I learn and uh, about Islam and preach the Islam as well. Now, uh, also when you were growing up, um, did you have any contact or exposure to Christians in general, or maybe someone uh, that you knew their missionaries in uh, the country? I, I knew Christians from my school, from my college and from my office as well, but nobody can speak about Christianity openly. Uh, it is kind of a sin in other ways it's not a sin but it's kind of a sin because i can report him somebody else can report him or our friendship will go bad or stuff like that so it's very hard for somebody to speak about christianity in in in, in our country that's just that's just almost impossible none of my friends could ever speak about christianity even when i'm speaking and telling them about islam and kind of mocking Jesus, in other words, by saying, hey, you guys believe him as God and etc. etc." They still cannot retaliate because they just simply cannot say Muhammad is not a prophet. It will it will go in, in a section uh, ordinance. So it is very hard for the the people to actually proclaim uh, the true word of God over there openly. They can't even preach on the streets. They have to preach inside the churches. Uh, only a Muslim can preach on the streets as well. So that's how it is. The dilemma, that's the dilemma, basically. It's, it's enforced in such a way 
that you just simply cannot know the truth. Yeah. So um, were there also uh, any natives from your country who also are considered to be Christians? Maybe that's their uh, religious tradition, not converts, but like they were from a Christian background. Were there any? Yeah, there are approximately two person Christians in. So let, let me just give the country name. It's 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 Pakistan. So there yeah, are. So that's why I didn't want to say anything because I, I I know there is. So that's why I was asking it this way. So uh, we know obviously in Pakistan there are Christian Pakistani Christians. Uh, how was life for the Pakistani Christians uh, when you were growing up? And uh, were they with you? Did they go to the same schools you go to? Uh, how were they treated? How did you view them? So. Out of the whole class of 60 kids, I had one Christian in the class, number one. Number two, there is the majority of the Christian out of these two person, 90 percent live in a very bad situation. Only the few who gets to climb up a lot of ladder and they still have the glass ceiling on top. They come to the schools that I went through. So. This this is this is a problem. You, you just majority of the Christians work a very low level job and the dilemma is that you know they are called uh, i don't even want i don't know if i can use that word uh, so i'm going to use a more better word dump cleaners so the proper terminology of christians that is used in pakistan is dump cleaner uh, that's the that's the best translation that i can do uh, so the one who actually cleans the uh, uh, drain holes basically the one that takes the dump from your bathrooms and those and those jobs are specifically for these people and that's why they are called that uh, since the beginning and right. even if you see right. the, yes yeah, even, yeah i mean uh, i i know uh, keep going please i want to i want to comment on that keep so going. even if you see the government uh, advertisement because this is a government job they will specifically write that the masihi people are preferred so that's that's the dilemma uh, for these Christian body in Pakistan. So you kind of don't see them up to your level because that's what it is. That's the reality of the situation. And, uh, you know, I know of another country in the Middle East also uh, that has uh, a population of Christians that live there and they are engaged in this kind of jobs, like you mentioned. It's unfortunate, uh, obviously, but uh, it is what it is. So uh, let, let me ask you this. Did you hear anything while you were growing up also about Christ in a way that may appear to you different than what you are accustomed to, according to the Quran, like by way of his name? Uh, you know, he's called Yeshua or Yeshua in Arabic, you know, uh, versus the Quran calling him Isa. Have you heard things like this? Did that intrigue you a little bit? Not at all. I never heard anything like that. I only knew that he was Isa. He was Masih. Uh, Yeshua never came to my knowledge when I was growing up. Uh, like I said, uh, very rigid kind of an environment. My my grandfather was already a a imam kind of a person i don't know how to translate gaddi nashin the people actually goes to him for different uh, issues and all so uh, a so called very pious uh, muslim and all and it's 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 almost impossible to i never even opened the bible that's how it is like i never even saw the bible in other words uh, <clears throat> there was one time when i was traveling abroad and i saw bible in the side uh, in my hotel room in my side drawer and I just looked at it, it says Bible and I just closed the drawer. So that's my introduction with Bible. That was the only introduction that I had with Bible. But yeah, so that's it. So nothing. I know that Christians, I knew back then that Christian believed in three gods. And uh, they also believed Mary to be the God. Uh, they worship Jesus, a human being as God. And they have three gods. So literally, that's that's the basic knowledge of majority of Muslims in Pakistan or in any uh, Muslim country. So basically, it's the standard way of understanding Christianity. Um, so what else? Uh, what happened after that? Um, uh, did you, uh, you know, begin to doubt Islam for some reason? Uh, what led you into, for instance, a journey that later resulted in you accepting Christ? So basically, uh, I went out of Pakistan to work and uh, I found a friend. Uh, a very nice friend and uh, he was Christian. So in, in not in Pakistan, 
when you are not in Pakistan, when you are working around non-Muslims anyways, uh, you get to f get have some friends. And that's what happens. And this guy uh, became a good friend. And one day he asked me a question. Uh, you know, these kind of questions are not common in Pakistan anyways. So, and I was like, okay, so this is good that he opened the, he opened the topic. So it means I need to get him from doing shirk to, to Allah finally. And uh, that's where we started to having discussions. And that was, that discussion lasted three years, you know? So that's a three years journey. So he used to ask me certain question. We used to argue about certain answers. We used to fight and all. Sometimes we fight, sometimes we just end the discussion at no conclusion. But once again, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I think two years into our discussion, uh, he gave me uh, uh, a lecture, rather some videos of David Wood. So I was unaware of all these apologetics ministries like David Wood or Sam Shimon or, or <clears throat> Christian Prince or, or uh, yours. Like, it was like unknown to me, full stop. Like, never thought about listening to the, listening to the arguments of these people who are presenting. Uh, so <clears throat> David Wood came up to being, I started listening to David Wood. Then he gave me a uh, Nabil Qureshi's uh, testimony uh, and then I was like oh and he shared some really good insights that is the first time then I then I when I started reading uh, 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 hadiths from the internet because Nabil Qureshi shared that it's not preserved there was a burn of burning of Quran day and I, I I was like oh my goodness that's that's not possible you know all my life I believed I was told by each and every single individual that Quran is perfectly preserved and and Muhammad is the best man who ever lived in this world. So like it's it's impossible that hadiths which are Sahih should say that. But but no, they, they, they are there in Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Muslim. They, they are all there. Uh, Sunan ibn Majah, they, it's, it's there and they are proclaimed Sahih. And uh, I went to, sorry, please. Uh, so it's something I want you to keep in mind uh, as you're discussing. Tell us how you felt about these objections that you began to hear about. Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, objections from David Wood. So basically, <laughs> once again, I will say that I hated David Wood. I hated Sam Shimon. When it comes to CP, I don't think there is any bad word that I knew and I never taken for him. Okay, so what, what, what did you call me? <laughs> no, you came in. You came for. You actually came in very late for me. Uh, okay, very good. Thank God for that. Uh, praise God for that. <laughs> so you you are you are one of those guys who came very late for me, and you have a huge influence for for my wife to come into Christ. So, but like I was working with David Wood at that time, and then then and I was like, oh my goodness, this guy is an idiot. Okay, that's that's the politest word that I can say in news channel right now. So, <laughs> but like after a few videos, I was like, I need to get in and read myself whether he's lying or not. And then I started reading the tafsirs. So at the end of the day, I read the Quran in, in nine translations, nine English translations uh, and a couple of uh, my language translations. I read three tafsir. Uh, including Ibn Kathir, which is one of the most sugar-coated one, and then an Aspabul Nazul. And then I started realizing things are going in a very strange tangent. At the same time, Quran is not perfectly preserved. And Allah by himself is saying that he abrogates and he makes to how forget. Did you, how did you get to the point that you're convinced or at least beginning to uh, doubt the preservation of the Quran? That's interesting because, uh, you know, that's the hardest thing for a Muslim to get over, basically. Exactly, because I went to my imam and I said, this is what uh, hadiths are saying. And he, he actually gave me the verse from Quran saying, we do not choose to abrogate, we do not choose to forget and abrogate, but we give, bring something better or similar. So he said like, yes, there were certain, uh, certain verses which were forgotten because Allah made them to forget. And I held that for a good seven, eight months. And I used to argue on that. Uh, but then again and again, I, I went on uh, in 2017, if I'm not mistaken, 
uh, while I was searching because I'm 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 a very you know uh, guy who uh, who just studies and and wants to correlate. And this guy, who's my Christian friend, whom I wanted to bring to Islam uh, because he was a nice guy, anyway. So uh, I wanted to give him the evidence as well. So for me to read the rebuttals and give him the evidence was very important because there are two benefits for me. One, I will get uh, my right hand will get more heavier and uh, I will I will have a better chance to go into Jannah. And secondly, he was doing shirk. So he should go to Jannah with me. So both of these points were there at that particular time. So I wanted to give him rebuttals to give him rebuttals. I had to do more study and I was spending a lot of time in studying all these things. But every time I dig up deep, I realize I do not have a rebuttal for him. And every time I dig deep, things goes in a very strange tangent for me. And and that's that's caused me doubts after doubts after doubt. And suddenly I, I found while I was searching on Internet, I found a debate, I think, which is called classical debate between Jay Smith and 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 uh, what's the guy's name? Shabir Ali. Shabir Ali. Yes. <clears throat> so yeah. that debate uh, I, I listened to that debate and Shabir Ali gave actually no rebuttal. He just gave zero rebuttal. And that's just like he and he he made a um, table of nine. He just and that, that was like, wow, this guy is giving all the historical evidences. And I had no idea about those things at all. After his debate, after listening to his debate, I, I, I worked on Jay Smith and I realized there is a video called by Dan uh, Gibson. So I searched on that and I found the video of Dan Gibson. And that just shattered me. I was like, this is just a theory. This guy is an idiot. He doesn't know jack about it. This video has no meaning whatsoever. But then again, now we are talking about 2018 and Jay Smith had already so many other rebuttals on that and so many other discussions and debates on that. And and and, and it's, it's just so hard to comprehend all of these things and not go into a tangent. Okay, forget it. Maka was always there. Dan Gibson was all wrong. Still, I do not have a single Quran which I can date back to uh, Muhammad's time. And then hadiths are saying that Quran is not fully preserved. There are verses missing. There are chapters missing. There are so many issues. And then uh, suddenly one of the CPs debate about uh, breastfeeding the adult. Wow, that's like like most of the Muslims don't even know that. So yes, you, for you, because you are in apologetics, you know these Muslims who are debating with you or who are coming up and saying certain things, they know these things already. But as a 95% Muslims, they don't know these things at all. Full stop. They just simply do not. And and when they first find it out, things goes like it, it goes crazy. Like how? Why? Even if it was for one particular woman, why? But once again, Hadith says that, that Aisha used to send these people to her sister. And, and 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 it's 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 just unbelievable. Like how can Ummi Hatul Mu'minin do that? And 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 then there was a slavery topic that Muhammad freed slaves. Once again, if you go and read hadiths, like Muhammad never freed slaves, but rather the people who actually freed slaves, he sold their slaves and said it is better to give it to uh, your your maternal uncle or parental uncle and stuff like that. It's it's it just goes into so much tangent. And 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 yes, this this. CP guy is is the is exposing the true Muhammad and 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 then when I started reading Quran this CP guy came up one day um, I think two and a half years later this the same friend of mine sent me a video of CP that's the first time I saw CP and uh, I listened to his debate and three or four days later the same guy said did you heard, listen to this debate I was like yes and he's like so what do you think I was like if I haven't given you an answer, it means I do not have an answer. So let's not talk about that debate. So that's how I ended my discussion with him on that. But like, then I started searching which of the highest Imam or the scholar actually have a debate with CP. And I found out Shabir Ali stating CP is on a higher rank than me. If you do, I don't know, boxing or football, whatever match you you had to be on the same league to talk and i'm not on his league like it was it was it was simply crazy because you are a scholar writing books you have done some phd or multiple phd whatever and you are coming here and saying this like some some scholar needs to put the foot in his mouth cp's mouth and make him stop he's like i i, I you have no idea how furious i was against cp 
he was he he was doing blasphemy against blasphemy and and i it's yeah. it's, it's crazy for me at that time because i was a muslim you know and i just cannot hear this 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 guy saying all these things but he, nobody there was nobody in this world who was coming up with cp and debating him and telling him he's lying and so one thing another one thing to another uh my my uh era or aura of perfectly preserved quran went down the drain uh islam is a religion of peace went down the drain uh quran doesn't have uh, uh any contradictions went down the drain um and uh, and the historical evidences of quran went down the drain uh, uh maryam is the is the uh uh daughter or uh, sister of aaron ya ukhta uh, and 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 uh, uh Mr. Zakir Ali uh, Zakir uh, saying that it is because of the noble people at that particular time, but uh, most noble person of that particular time. But that should be Yaukta Moses, if that's what you want to say. And then this guy came up and he said, like they were not even from the same tribe because he knew Bible, I didn't. And he showed me from the Bible that this was the tribe of Levi, this was the tribe of Judah, and this is this is coming from that area. And I was like, everything, like everything that I held true. started went down into a a big hole and uh, yeah don't don't think it's not the other holes that uh. <laughs> right 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 so that's that's fascinating and i just want to welcome again everybody who's joining us thank you for the moderators and by the way moderators i took the liberty to block uh, one guy you know uh, we we didn't need his headache um uh, all uh you know i wanted to say is that you guys are watching now and listening to amazing testimony by our dear brother adam seeker adam before we continue how can people by the way follow you just if you want to tell them about your presence because that's how i came across you yeah i am in facebook with the name of adam seeker i have uh, i have recently started my youtube channel which is youtube.com/forward/c/forward/adamseeker and at the same time i have my own website called adamseekeroftruth.com so Amen. all Amen. of these I, things if people are seeking to find you they cannot miss you right it's adam seeker uh, so uh, that, that's what they uh, and and this is the sign look at his sign you'll be able to to find it's it's bullseye for sure so um you started it to doubt uh, all of your uh, preservations and all of your um, you know sense of confidence uh, were shattered So did that help you accept Christ right away or did you go through a phase of maybe uh debating yourself now a phase of maybe delu- uh, being disillusioned or or what happened Yes so the second point second stage of my thing was that at the end there were one day I just suddenly said okay it's, it's enough is enough uh if Allah is not God and Muhammad is not a prophet and he was just a, a 7th century guy i don't even want to say anything more about that there's so many things that i can attach to that i don't know if it is <laughs> under 18 permissible so anyhow then there is no god full stop there could be some superpower some aliens who dropped something here in this world and we we got born and uh, i went into that direction uh, and uh, i that is the time like my wife at that particular time uh, did not know that i was doing this much research he knew she knew that i was doing some research i was showing her some very minor minor things because i just simply cannot i was afraid uh, our relationship will go down the drain but the day i said now imagine i used to get up in the morning i used to take a bath a ritualistic bath do my fajr prayer then i openly proclaim the bismillah before my uh, breakfast when i go out in my car i do another prayer a sectra sectra come back my isha prayer was even lengthier because when i was trying to search i was i was doing more sujood i was doing longer qiyam and uh, to do to ask god so called allah that give me the light give me the guidance give me the light of the truth so show me and nothing every time i do research it went down the drain so finally i said there's no god full stop if the god cannot hear then there is no god and i told my wife and the first thing that came out of her mouth is 
don't tell me you are a Christian. I was like, no, no, not at all. Uh, <clears throat> every, all of these are just man-made. So, and he, she said like, don't be a Christian at least. Uh, you'll come back to Allah soon. Uh, but that is the time when we started to have some rift because now I was giving her the same kind of videos. I was giving her the the debates. I was giving her the uh, videos of uh, 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 Mr. David Wood and Sam Shimon. By the way, Sam Shimon is brilliant. <laughs> He's brilliant. Uh, Amen. Yeah, I used to hate him, but now I love him <laughs> in a good way. So uh, I won't tell him. Sorry, I'm not gonna tell him yet that you hated him. <laughs> okay, good. That's good. Because I don't, I, because I don't want to hurt his feelings. Oh my goodness! Yeah, if he, if his feelings are hurt, things will be very bad for me. <laughs> so, hey, by the way, uh, uh, are you open to take a, a question or so? Right yeah, now? sure, sure, please. Okay, so I'm gonna put the question in front of you. This is a Muslim that is uh, making a typical claim. By the way, typical claim that apparently you didn't know anything about Islam. So here it is. I'm going to put it right here. Oh, yeah, I know him. He he rejected my live debate with him multiple times. And uh, uh, this guy is, is uh, I don't even want to say anything more. I have asked him. I do live debates as well. I have asked him multiple times to come up and have a debate. I have been a Muslim for over 38 years of my life. Uh, and I, I was a devout Muslim doing everything any Muslim would ever do. So once again, anyone who says otherwise that I was not uh, one guy, one guy first claim and he said, like, come on up and and uh, offer. Uh, let's recite Quran and we'll see who can recite better. I was like, if that is your standard, then come on up. We will do that as well. But that shouldn't be a standard because 50 percent of people cannot even recite Quran. But anyhow, come live. Let's let's recite. So these people, whoever thinks that I was not a Muslim, come up. I have no issue. Even like 80 percent of the Muslim or 70 percent of the Muslim, I don't know. They don't even recite any dua after Adhan. I used to recite dua after Adhan every time. And there is a specific dua. Allahumma rabbaha bidawati tamah wa salatil qaimah ati Muhammad al-wasila al fazila wa darajat rafiya. Pabasu maqam al mahmud al-lazi wa tarzat nashfaat al-yom al-kiyama inna kalatu kli kulmiyat. So. Do not tell me that I was never a Muslim, or I never yeah, I mean, knew about anything. Quran. It's it's really an interesting, uh, you know, argument they raise. You know, um, it's it's always like you're a good Muslim until you decide to leave Islam. All of a sudden, you never knew Islam. You didn't follow Islam. So I'm I'm wondering what is the true definition in their mind of a Muslim? You know, uh, the Quran, the Hadith make it clear that uh, you have to submit to Allah, to the Messenger, that you have to believe in certain things. And that you have to, uh, of course, recite the Shahada or believe in it uh, in the first place. That you have to pray. You have to do certain pillars. I mean, and then what? You know, if, if we take their definition of what uh, a Muslim is, then like you said, there's a lot of Muslims that can't read the Quran in Arabic, don't understand the Quran in Arabic, don't even know how to do the right prayer sometimes because nobody taught them how to do it correctly. And they cannot even recite many of the things that the prophet taught his Muslim followers to recite in prayers and so on and so forth. So, so what is their definition of Islam? Is this something that you hear all the time, by the way? Yeah, I hear a lot of things like these. But at the end of the day, to be a Muslim, you need to have, know the Shahada. And there are five pillars of Islam. Tawheed, uh, Salah. Tawheed is the Shahada and Salah, uh, fasting, uh, Zakat, and Hajj, if you have the money. And these people, like, if you're doing all that, you are already a Muslim. But like, I was, I can definitely say that I was far, far more uh, than just simple Muslim. And um, that's, that's what it was. But yeah, so I think going back to our testimony, because now it's done, this guy, I, I, I'm willing to have a debate with him any day when he wants to. Uh, you can go to my YouTube channel. You can see. Yeah, I, I just brought him here uh, to allow people to see the kind of uh, stupid questions uh, that uh, people like him ask. I mean, it's the dumbest question you'll ever ask, actually, because if I would just to talk to him for five minutes, I will expose the fact that he doesn't know anything about Islam. So if he's open for that, I'll be more than happy to entertain him in Arabic. He can come to my show and I will skin him by the time I'm finished. It will take five minutes only. 
So that's an open debate for him right there. So anyway, um, what happened next? You know, now you are into phase two of your journey to Christ. What else will happen? Yes, this is the time when your videos start to come up. And because now I was searching and my wife was shattered. You are one of the most soft spoken person in apologetics that I have yet seen. And you have a huge emphasis, um, emphasis on my wife's uh, journey to the to the truth. <clears throat> And I started giving her your videos because, you know, men reacts differently versus women. And uh, so I started giving her your testimony to begin with. And then you were you were wearing the Arabic dress and all that. And it was like it was mind boggling for her to listen to you. And things weren't like things went in a different tangent. So anyhow, <clears throat> three or four months down the road, she was having a huge trauma. We were going through very hard times at that time, but I was, uh, sorry, not three, uh, sorry. One month down the road, my same friend gave me the Bible. He's like, why don't you now read Bible? And uh, I was like, this is also a false book. Everything is wrong here. And it's like, okay, fair enough. Why don't you just pick up this Bible? Just like Quran and Hadith, you realize the issues. Give me the issues from this book now. So there was a belief that you had previously. Now you have left that belief. Now pick up this Bible. And now why don't you do the same that you did with Quran and Hadith? First time I opened the Bible and I realized that Bible is not just the words of Jesus. It is starting from the Old Testament, the, the Torah, or there is there's Zabur in there already. And there are so many other books which are written by the prophets and and uh, the United Kings and all. I, I never knew that. I never knew that. So anyhow, he opened up the New Testament for me. And uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, the first thing he said, like Luke, chapter of Luke, that's what I read. I, I realized how dramatic difference it is from the Quran to the birth of uh, Jesus uh, when Mary is singing about uh, being very nice uh, for the birth of Jesus versus Mary in Quran saying I should have uh, uh, dead should have been dead before before this childbirth pain so uh, then there is a difference of there's no uh, infancy kind of a thing over there that Jesus was speaking from in the in a, in a childhood from the from the cradle and etc etc things things started to shape a little better uh, at the same time now I started asking him questions on Trinity in a different way. Previously, I was simply mocking. Now I said, okay, explain me Trinity. Uh, once again, the very hard topic to, <clears throat> to explain uh, most for most of the Christians. Uh, he introduced me with his pastor and then I go to this pastor and he would spend hours with me, not just hour, hours. Like sometimes it's like four to five hours we are talking. This pastor was pretty calm in that he, he used to he used to listen he used to and after my testimony he actually told me that when i was telling you things i had no idea whether you were absorbing any of it because you were giving me rebuttals on everything yet i don't know when you were absorbing the whole situation is you guys has to this is for all my christian brothers and sisters who are listening provide the answers in the most beautiful manner that you can whoever is seeking so like i, I in the end i said whoever is seeking uh <clears throat> like you do not know who is absorbing and who is going to go back and do research further. So anyhow, by doing that, the pastor moved me to John. He said, like, let's start John. Uh, he, this will give you more insight. And he started from the John chapter one. Uh, for the first chapter is blasphemy to begin with anyways. Uh, obviously, I was holding something in the back of my mind from the Muslim scriptures, even though that I, I rejected Muslim scriptures anyways. Anyhow, a few chapters into John, some prophecy came up and suddenly I started moving towards the prophecies. Okay, uh, there should be ample prophecies according uh, and uh, in, in this book. And then my pastor gave me certain prophecies and then I started uh, uh, reading on the internet about the prophecies of Lord Jesus Christ. And it was amazing how these prophecies were coming into effect, uh, especially why he was crucified. Like that was something that I needed to know. 
uh, if if this book is right, then historical evidences should should provide that information as well. And then I started reading the historical evidences uh, uh, of uh, of the of the crucifixion of Christ, like different different historians stating about that. And when when I when I when I started reading those, uh, Strobel uh, came up, uh, who who was an atheist, and and he he wrote a book of Case of Christ, uh, and his video a movie came up, and uh, there were obviously other other uh, like Broad Ed Arman, who was uh, uh, Muslims' favorite. He also said the that the most certain fact of history. Is that the crucifixion of Jesus? And uh, <clears throat> Paula, Paula also said that, that. But anyhow, in the end, Jesus was crucified. So there was a Jesus guy who was crucified, but did he raise up again? Now that's something that is fate. But once again, I cannot accept fate. Uh, I was faithless already. Uh, <clears throat> how could I do that? So anyhow. There was something in the back of my mind which was still saying that there was some superpower, superhuman power, which brought us to this world, and that is when I one day called up the same pastor and I said, "Hey, pastor, if I uh, if I need to pray to your God, how should I pray?" And um, the pastor actually pa paused for a couple of seconds. And he's like, uh, what do you mean? You just pray. And I like, no, 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 no. You need to tell me how, like, how should I cleanse myself? Where should I face? Uh, what are the verses that I have to repeat? What are the verses that I have to say while standing? Like how many postures, like give me a book or an internet uh, website. Tell me how should I pray to your God if I need to pray to your God? Once again, your God. <laughs> Anyhow, he he came back and he he just he says like, how would you speak to your father? I was like, I'll just go and speak. He's like, yeah, that's how you speak with your heavenly father. Like, if he would have given me any theory or theological concept, I would have never remembered it or never proclaimed it like this is the most powerful thing that he would have ever sent in the most simplest way like how do you speak with your father and that's that's when i came back home and i said i sat on my sofa <laughs> and i said hi god father so if you are true god show me your light so, amen. amen. Anyhow, two, three days later, I spoke to the same pastor again. I was like, dude, I understand there was a guy, Jesus. He died on the cross. I have historical evidences. Uh, <clears throat> I have seen the biblical critiques as well. I read on that. I see this book has some very powerful testimonies of Jesus. It's not possible that somebody writing way before Jesus and then this guy coming up and doing exactly what it was, uh, how it was. Then he was crucified, fair enough. Yes, I have the uh, Dead Sea Scroll Bible at home at that time as well, found it, uh, <clears throat> verified it that yes, in the older, uh, and it was carbon dated anyway. So uh, it these were written before Christ to begin with. Uh, but how do I trust that he rose? He's like, ask him. Call Jesus, ask him. He is Lord. So he will show you. I was like, okay, so now you want me to talk to Jesus, pray to Jesus. He's like, yeah, just ask him. That's when I started for the very first time. Is like, hey, Jesus, hi. If you are there, if you are really God, show me a sign. Show me a sign that you are living. That's like, seriously speaking, I didn't had enough faith, obviously. I was just asking with the most doubtful heart ever. And it's not just one day. I think fifth or sixth or seventh day, I was literally crying, 
right next to my bed as like because i was going through different very disturbing time with my family at that time already with my wife and all the situation i was like you have to tell me otherwise it's done deal right like anyhow i kept on crying crying and i don't know when i f- fell to sleep mm. and that's that's the time i in my dream everything was dark everything was dark and on the right side i saw him standing wow i saw him hallelujah hallelujah yes thank you sorry it it always gives me shivers in my body hey, 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 take your time brother we're not in a hurry take your time so i saw him standing and the only thing that i can say to him was lord raise up your hand and bless me and he did not i woke up i woke up and this was me oh my goodness i was so full of me that i woke up and i said this was my brain who was creating this it was nothing i was asking for signs still i was not believing and i was like ah nah that's that's just just me i went back to sleep same thing he came back on the right side everything is jet black white nuri 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 and i said please raise up your hand and bless me and he did not this time i woke up again and this time i was crying i was like it's not possible unless he is god unless he has the authority over everything it's not possible twice in a row not possible same thing not possible <laughs> i accepted him right there and then right there and then wow even though he did not bless you uh, you at least recognize that the same dream you know happening twice in a row in the exact same manner that meant something to you exactly exactly okay and then what happened next day morning i wanted to tell my wife i could not in the evening i went to the same friend's house dropped my kids to him took my wife out and i told her I was like this is what happened last night i have read this 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 in bible i have read these all these things this is what happened <clears throat> i accept him as my lord and my savior full stop i am christian whether you call me christian whatever this is what i am this is who i am and i'm not going to back up now back down now. i my wife started crying we both started crying i prayed with her but once again she is still a muslim we went back we i gave my testimony to my friend as well he rejoiced we all prayed together and now i was only praying lord <clears throat> one more time come back and bless me that's all i'm going to ask never again i will not ask you to come back to my dream again i will never ask you to show my yourself again to me just one more time raise up your hand and bless me and i kept on praying for this slept he is so loving he came back he raised up his hands he blessed me this time he was close this time i did not wake up this time i did not wake up i don't know whether the whole night was 5 minutes long or whether that's the only thing i saw when i opened my eyes it was morning the most beautiful sleep i have ever had in my entire life never before never after that's hallelujah. hallelujah so so you received the blessing um what did you do after that yes now it was for my wife so now i started working with my wife i was suddenly changed in a single day my wife like i was an angry man quite frankly my wife would say something to me i won't let her go that's how simple it is um i i, I was so such full of these things because because my wife is is my wife i can have like four wives i can 
I can even beat her. Like I knew that people proclaim that. Just to clarify, you're talking when you were a Muslim. Yes, you were that way. Yes, yes. So now I was like, I was changed. I was fully changed. My wife right now is in trauma basically because now she shouldn't be with me anyways. She's a Muslim. She shouldn't be with me. When you made that decision to follow Jesus, she's starting to face now tension to decide whether she stays with you or leaves. Exactly. We were living in our home as brothers and sisters for many months, like almost brother and sisters for many months. This is the time when my wife could not believe how dramatically changed personality she is looking at now for, as me. She had to go to the doctor and take prescription tension medication because she just cannot bear the tension. Like she was angry all the time and I was the most somehow politest person according to her. She's like, it's, it's impossible for you to change in, in an overnight. And what have, what like she even doubted that I have other girlfriends right now because I just simply changed. I'm, I'm just so changed. She just simply cannot bear and she can, simply cannot understand what Jesus can do in your life. That's, and like for, for months, we worked together. Like I, I gave her things. I gave her biblical things. I gave her the apologetics thing. Your ministry was the one which she watched most. And it is her testimony, but anyhow, three months, four months down mm -hmm. the road, praise Lord, thank you. And three, four months down the road, she said, okay, finally. With all that, I have I, I I accept Jesus. Full stop. I have no way not to accept him. Now, with all that, what I have seen, read, what you have gone through, how you have changed, how, and and obviously at that time I was studying more and more and more from the biblical stuff. Plus, I I made different presentations for my wife, and and those presentation and those things are already on the internet on my on my website as well. And four months down the road, she also accepted Christ and we got baptized together on the same day. Hallelujah. And that's amazing. I, I hope and pray that one day she uh, will share her testimony, whether in our show or somewhere else to encourage others. Of course, that's important. But uh, in her timing, uh, that's amazing, brother. Uh, again, uh, everyone uh, here, you've been uh, listening to the amazing testimony and journey to Christ by our brother, Adam Seeker. And uh, it's almost like we got two for one here, uh, you know, uh, yours and also the fact that your wife also accepted Christ. That's beautiful. Hallelujah. So uh, since you became a believer, uh, what type of ministry, if you are involved in ministry, I should say, what type of ministry have you been doing? If you like to share, of course. Yeah, my, I, I do not have an association with any ministry. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get a get a association with anyone but i'm well, just no, no, what, what i meant your own i mean doesn't have to be an association with anyone what are you doing to serve the lord right now because i, I know you're doing activities on social media if you like to yes. talk about that yes yeah. so i am i'm i'm i am showing the deception in the quran which the imams are doing so i am showing what the imams are telling you and what it's written in quran versus what the true tafasir are and that's what I expose. So I expose the Quran verse with the actual tafasir, the authentic tafasir. Plus, uh, <clears throat> I show the hadiths to combine with all that. And I'm working with Muslims only. Praise Lord, praise Lord, that a guy like me, who whose voice is not even heard so very high, I have four testimonies through me. Praise Lord for that. Uh, four testimonies so far with me. Who, who accepted Christ and they were Muslims. Uh, <clears throat> praise God for that. And 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 I'm, I'll keep on doing for as long as I can and as long as I will. Like one of the guy actually said, show me your face. And I was like, I cannot. You want to know what I am speaking or you want to know my face? He's like, you guys kill people like me. He said, no, don't worry. We'll give you three days. So this is the reality of the situation. That's why I can't show my face. That's why it's a target. You know, I have a target behind my head. and. And my parents are bigger target. If they can't find me, they will go to my parents and they will capture them. So <clears throat> that's that's how that's the reality of 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 the situation. 
and uh, uh, so yes yeah, so my my main mission is to work with the Muslims because I know the scriptures inside out and especially from the last three years of my search I read even further I know what their initial beliefs are and at the same time during I missed in the middle I studied Shiism as well in a little bit because I said if Shuni, Sunnism is wrong then might be Shiism might be right because obviously there are there will be 73 sects of Islam and only one sect of Islam will go into heaven the rest will go into hell anyways so <clears throat> I went into that as well I went into minority sects as well but once again every like when the basic root level things are wrong which is Quran and basic Hadith the sects cannot do anything I read a bit of al kafi as well but like you, you just simply cannot deny the fact that Muhammad was not a prophet and Allah is doing things which which Satan would do like I have uh, like how can Allah misguide how, how can Allah send stray if Allah is God his main purpose is to to guide everyone humans has to go astray I I asked this with my to my imam and he said okay Ali said that raise up your right leg uh, okay I rose raise up my left right leg okay now raise up your left leg as well uh, I cannot he said this is the difference between destiny and uh, 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 free will said so in your free will you can raise up your one leg but not the other leg. like this doesn't make sense anyways he said this is a these okay now I have to back off a lot of things you have to just back off when you're talking with the Imams as a Muslim because they will just push you to to a corner where you cannot say anything more because they do not have the answers that is the major problem Islam does not have the answers and that's why Islam goes into into a, a traumatic experience and and that's why when you start reading and try to understand you will not find the answers the only time you will actually find the answers are in the Bible you will actually find everything which is in the Bible which is going through a sequence of events and every prophet is saying something which the ne next prophet is doing till the end how can Allah uh, deceive people by by sending somebody else or by showing it as Jesus on the cross but then wait for 600 years to send Muhammad and say oh it was a deception <clears throat> or it was a shubha so in the, in the Arabic let's just say shubha because somebody will say shubha is not deception so anyhow uh, so why would Allah wait for 600 years it's not possible like and when the historical evidence is saying that Jesus was crucified how can you deny that fully and then then again like no matter how you pick up Quran it's it's it will go into a trauma because you have to look into tafsir to understand what the Quran is saying otherwise Quran and what is tafsir tafsir is actually trying to make sense of what the Quran verse is saying if this if like let me take the CP's most prominent argument if the Sun is setting in a muddy water it doesn't say as if the tafsir says as if if the Sun is rising from among the place where the people have no shield upon them but the tafsir will define more but some of the tafsirs will go into a very tangent because the tafsir of Jalalan says those people were namely Negroes who goes into the tunnels and uh, when the sun is rising and then when the sun is on the top they come out that's the tafsir so it's it's crazy no matter how you pick up whatever in the Quran you will go into a very strange tangent and 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 the good verses which are earlier the abrogated verses and then the later verses which are talking about the fighting and all that it's it's, it's just it's just not possible how you can reconcile them unless you say there's those were abrogated or you say this was a contradiction if it is not a contradiction they have to take the take the stance of abrogation or abrogator and that's what is happening so <clears throat> my only ministry is to work with Muslims to tell them the truth to show them the real Quran and Hadith and yes I hear a lot of abuse that's okay and I hear that I was never a Muslim I hear that but that's the problem like whether I'm telling you what is in there or not if you like instead of saying kazab 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 why don't you present me with the evidence if you have any that's the problem they will not present you with an evidence but they will only say kazab kazab right so we we have uh, uh, the same Muslim friend who has really a, a powerful very powerful refutation to your entire testimony and I'm going to show it to everybody to see how intelligent this guy is. I mean, it's amazing. When you read his refutation, you will be blown away. So here's his refutation right here. His refutation 
is how many years are between Jesus and Moses? See how dumb these questions are? I mean, this guy who's probably from Nigeria or from somewhere, not an Arab, doesn't even know Arabic. His name is laughable, by the way. Right now, you look at his name. That's not even a proper Arabic name to even say it this way. And Allahu is not basically written that way. I can even show you how to write it in Arabic and in English. And yet you're coming here asking these stupid questions. So let me ask you this question then, Rahim. How many years were between the time the Quran was revealed for the first time and the canonized Quran known as the Cairo edition? Can you guess? Please tell us how many years. 1400 to be precise yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah this this guy like you can simply ask him tell me the same years from quran and he will not be able to do so uh that's how silly his argument is uh then they come back this guy or many other guys comes back that uh why do you celebrate 25th december okay so why do you celebrate 12th rabbi level or 9th rabbi level uh, shia versus sunni this is not even in quran as well so no matter like they will not go into the major problems of Quran. They will actually pick up these kind of things which have no meaning, which have no connection to anything at all. You need to see what the Quran essence is saying if supposedly it is perfectly preserved, which it is not. But let's assume for the time being, for the sake of argument, that it is perfectly preserved. Then from the Quran, Quran is destroying itself from inside the Quran. If Quran is saying that it is abrogated or it choose to be forgotten, then Quran is saying that it is perfectly preserved. There is no meaning to be perfectly preserved. There's no meaning because Quran already denounced it. So is it perfectly preserved in the Lohil Mahfuz? Then what is the purpose of that Lohil Mahfuz book? Because that book is not even in the access of us. There's no purpose for oh, that book. Yeah. Not, not to mention, of course, Rahim doesn't even know that because he can't even read Arabic. Uh, you know, Allah al-Mahfuz, you know, the preserved tablets is like, it has the word of Allah that is uncreated. Hmm, that sounds like the Trinity to me. You have Allah, you have Allah al-Mahfuz, the preserved tablets, and then the preserved tablets became incarnate in a book called the Quran that has many errors in it. That's That's amazing, actually. Exactly, exactly. And at the same time, Quran actually uh, gives more hints on that subject that uh, Isa was Kalamatul Tuhu, so of Allah basically. At the same time, Isa was Khalik. In Quran, it actually says that Isa Khalak, what? The bird from the mud, right? Allah created or Khalak, the Adam from the mud. So both created, then Allah blew the spirit into Adam. And then uh, Isa blew the spirit into Adam, uh, uh, into the bird. So they are both creating in Quran. And that is why when Allah says that uh, Allah, uh, we are the best of all creators, creators in the plural form, it says creators, not creator. We are the best of creators. So like, seriously, um, do you still need to know? Because I, I tend to uh, read a little more and I found out that in, in um, Bahira, the Rahab, you guys actually need to search on Bahira the Rahab and see how he gave things to Muhammad. Yeah, uh, so we, we have another fascinating question by our intellectual uh, scholar right here. So he's saying, is that your own Trinity, Al-Fadi? Let me ask you another question, Rahim. Explain the word Ahad to me in awesome. Arabic. What does the word Ahad mean in Arabic? When you find it in your own dictionary, come back to me, please, and explain it to me because the word Ahad in Arabic means one of. So your God is one of other gods. That's funny because we don't know how many other gods are out there. So go ahead and search, man. I mean, uh, we really want to help you. Hopefully you can show up again next time. We'll have a field day with you. It seems yeah. like it's going to be a lot of fun. On Ahad, let me tell you, in 90s, Nine, up till 1990, in the Islamic Studies book of Pakistan, they used to write Yakta. Yakta, in, instead of one or ek, they used to write Yakta. So the word Yakta means uh, unify. So after 1990, they changed the Islamic Studies books and they translated it as one. If you pick any uh, Islamic study book of, of Pakistan of the course 
inside the school they used to write jakta because ahad does not means one ahad means uh, uh, wahid means one ahad does not even means one it's and yakta means unified yeah. so they can actually define it as yakta as well but like one of as well sir yeah. well it was happened i mean his smart prophet probably heard the jews talking about ahad basically the shema and he yes. just said, that's how smart he is you know uh, he he figured that out that oh that's what they mean by one not realizing really that the oneness is unique it has plurality in it in fact the same word was used in genesis 224 to describe marriage the institution of marriage for this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave into his wife and the two shall become one flesh, flesh. notice two become one flesh and of course the smart prophet couldn't tell you know the difference between ahad and one anyway uh we don't want to waste our time on stuff like that but uh, uh brother how can people um you know follow you again if you want to remind them yes they can go to my youtube channel which is uh, youtube.com forward slash c forward slash adam seeker please subscribe i have uh, adam seeker of truth.com and allah versus yahweh actually describes this ahad and the spirit of allah and unification of yahweh and all that it also has the sama sama israel yahweh elohim yahweh ahad it also have the different verses about the ahad it also shows that spirit which is roh is not Jibrail because that's what it is and Ruh and Malaika are coming down to the earth and etc etc there are multiple refutation because I went through all of these during my study so whatever I went through during my study I wrote it down for my wife and for my family members but then after some time I realized that there are a lot of Muslims out there I need to go out and publicize it so <clears throat> there is no ministry of mine you do not have to pay me any money it's all there for free of cost. Download, copy, paste, do whatever you want to do. Share, share the word. This is Adam Seeker, which is on YouTube. Adam Seeker of Truth.com is my website. And Adam Seeker, you can find on, on Facebook as well. If anybody wants to have a live debate, you are more than welcome as well. I. And if you can uh, email me those links, I'll make sure they are in the description box as well. Uh, yes, sir. I will definitely do that. And that and, and that's that's my purpose. My purpose is to spread the truth as so and, and also at the same time show the deception and the lies. And right now, we I just want to highlight one major important problem that is happening in Pakistan. One of the 13 years old child girl is abducted by Ali, who is 45 years old guy force married to him and forcefully converted to islam and the case is running in court but just like huma yusuf two years ago <clears throat> and the court of pakistan said that she is menstruating helps she is adult and this marriage is lawful and she was giving given back to her abductors she was 14 years old the same fate will happen with this girl so go to my youtube channel learn about that i have some videos on that share and spread let international channel push that in pakistan on pakistan so that this the fate of this girl will not be the same even if she gets released it's already been three weeks uh two two weeks even if she gets released she will have a trauma for her entire life i'm a father of a daughter i i, I can't even put my feet on that shoes so please please spread the news make more videos about that I don't know if somebody else can have a good ministry who can do something for her. Please do that. That's my pledge. Amen, brother. Amen. That's wonderful. And uh, the uh, moderators just notified me that also they've been posting your links. So uh, at least people will have them. But go ahead and, and send them to me by email. I'll make sure they're in the description box. And I want to make sure that you and I will get in touch again to see if we can maybe do isolated shows on certain apologetic topics. Amen. Uh, it will be my pleasure. Praise God. And this will be the testimony for Lord Jesus. And it will be my honor to do that. Uh, Amen. And uh, thank you, of course, for sharing your testimony. And we praise God also that your wife embraced Christ. Uh, and uh, everyone, uh, let me check and see if you we have any specific questions. Uh, somebody was asking a, a normal question saying, what do Muslims have to lose when they come to Christ and what do they gain after they come to Christ? I mean, it's it's obvious what we lose. We lose everything and we gain Christ, of course. That's uh, the most important thing. But if any of you have any last question, please, last minute question, please uh, feel free to send it our way.
I'll, if I uh, may answer this well, question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Absolutely. Go ahead. What you gain is you gain salvation without killing anybody in jihad and dying in jihad. So that is what you gain. Amen. So what you lose is that in in as a Muslim, the only true way or known way to have Jannah with with confidence of hundred percent is when you actually go into jihad, kill other people, and only then you have a hundred percent surety that you will go into Jannah. As a follower of Christ, you do not have to go and kill non-believers. You don't have to go there to kill. And fight and die in jihad to get Jannah. That's what you will going to lose, and that's Amen. what you will going to gain. Hallelujah! Now we know, of course, for safety reasons, uh, you didn't, uh, you don't want to like your face out there. But but where you at right now? Without telling any specifics, of course, do you feel uh, safe at least, or do you feel you're threatened? Meaning, if you would walk out of your home, are you threatened, or are you at least for now safe? For now, I'm at least safe. Nobody knows who I am from my name. So that is all good. Uh, <clears throat> so yes, that's that's the situation. Praise God for that. I am working on some other things. Uh, please pray for me that the Lord will give me more safety so that ev eventually I should be able to show my face because I actually want to show my face. But for as long as I have the association with that country, I cannot. Uh, once I do not have that association, then I can. Amen. And Wonderful. And uh, folks, um, uh, before I close here, I, I want to thank our uh, moderators and especially Sister Mariana for posting to you also about the upcoming online conference that we are putting together next week on Friday the 6th by invitation only. So you have to register by this Tuesday if you're interested, which is called Track One. You will see the link in there. And if you go to my promo video yesterday that I did with Jay, Dr. Jay Smith, you will see the links as well. And track one is on evangelism. That's on Friday by invitation only. You have to go through a two-step process for that. Then track two and three on Saturday, November 7th, uh, the one in the morning will be uh, apologetics. The one in uh, will have Dr. Jay Smith and Dr. David Wood, and then there'll be panel discussion. And the one in the, in the afternoon, it will be on biblical prophecy and the place of the Arab world in there. And we have a number of speakers who specialize in that field. The one on um, Friday will have a number of former Muslims, uh, followers of Jesus. I'm one of those that will be teaching sessions. If you're interested, please either click on the links that were provided for you here or go to my promo videos that I did the latest one of them was with Dr. J. Smith yesterday on October 30th, and you will be able to get information. The conference will start a week from now. So hopefully we can see many of you and uh, you'll end up, of course, getting a link to the recording uh, if you register as well. And I uh, want to just uh, update you. I know a couple of days ago I was in our studios and uh, we had a campaign to try to raise a hundred partners through patreon i'm pleased to tell you that so far eight have signed up we are down now to 92 so please continue to pray about sharing this with others and if you are a partner already through a patreon we thank you or even through any other means and if not we would love for you to consider to become one of our partners thank you so much because it helps us to do the things that we do get the equipments that we get and maintain of course our presence uh, live and on air Brother, thank you so much, and uh, we will be in touch, uh, certainly, to begin to plan for future shows together. Amen. And everyone, thank you, and uh, uh, we pray that you'll be able to join us soon. Uh, you will watch me periodically between now and the conference day because we'll be doing a lot of promos, and I'll be doing pro possibly another live stream, if not even two, between now and next Friday, November 6th. Thank you, everyone. God bless. This is Al-Fadi, over and out.